Chandler. Welcome to another edition of Fire Engineering Training Minutes. Today we're going to discuss colorimetric papers and the use of meters to ensure that you have a safe entry into a potentially hazardous environment. One of the easiest ways to perform that is utilizing colorimetric papers. On the hazmat civilian rescue SOP that is followed here at the Guilford Fire Department, every member that makes an entry into an unknown environment is issued pH paper, KI paper, and fluorine paper. Each will have its own characteristics on identifying and classifying that hazardous atmosphere. This can either be applied to your face piece or onto a six foot hook that you can cast out in front of you to give yourself a little pre-warning as to what potential hazards you might be encountering. When utilizing pH paper, there are some acids out there that do not yield a corrosive vapor. Conversely, there are some acids out there that when the pH paper is exposed to it, will show you that there's a corrosive vapor in the atmosphere. This sort of scenario here, where the pH paper has changed to a red color, demonstrates the need to stop doing what you're doing if you are not in a total encapsulated level A suit. If you are in your turnout gear or a non-encapsulated splash protection suit, then you need to identify that hazardous atmosphere that you are in a, in a corrosive atmosphere that is producing acid vapors. And to demonstrate that is an acid as well, it just does not yield corrosive vapors. Much like the acids, we have bases that will produce basic vapors or caustic vapors and some that will not. When the pH paper touches a base, it will turn a, anywhere from green to blue in color. This one, however, is not producing a, a vapor that is caustic. It is just off of a dip test. Conversely, this one here will indicate that you have caustic vapors in the atmosphere. And it will turn more of a greenish hue to a bluish hue as opposed to that stark blue color that you see off of a liquid dip. You'll also notice that the color will switch back to its neutral color given time because of the water content that is in the air. This may not necessarily be the case when you're, if you're in a really arid environment. Uh, also, if you're in a really arid environment, you might not actually get a change of, of pH atmospherically from vapors because of the fact that it is re not reacting with the moisture in the air. The white paper is KI paper, also known as starch paper. Technical name is potassium iodide. It changes from white to a blackish bluish color when in presence of an oxidizer. Oxidizers being one side of the fire triangle that will greatly enhance combustion. That would be our concern with the oxidizer world. Most of the oxidizers that are out there are basically not vapor producing materials. However, there are some oxidizers that will exist as a vapor form, those being the free halogens of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. If those vapors are present in the air, you do have the ability to change this paper. It will not change as a dry paper like the pH paper did. This would have to be wetted first with eye drops or other, some other neutral buffered solution. If you're going to go for a liquid dip, some of our oxidizers that are out there are like bleaching agents will appear that it only changed white. But if you look real closely at the wet dry interface, a black line will start to form. That is telling me that I have a bleaching agent that is also an oxidizer. This hydrogen peroxide, however, immediately starts to change the paper to that blackish bluish sort of color, depending upon the concentration of the, uh, the hydrogen peroxide in solution with water. When you see this color change, that's indicating that you have an oxidizer present. If you see it in its vapor phase again, after you take dry paper and you wet it with water and you have a color change from that black to blue color, then that is time to stop doing what you're doing if you're not in a level A suit because you're not being protected by the ensemble that you're wearing. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the four gas meter. The four gases that are, can be detected by this particular four gas meter are Combustible gases on the LAL sensor, oxygen on the oxygen sensor, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon monoxide. When I'm doing an investigation for a hazard materials event for purposes of rescue, I am not at all concerned about carbon monoxide 
or hydrogen sulfide being present in the fact that while I'm wearing my PPE turnout gear with an air pack on, I am not gonna be affected by those vapors. I am, however, concerned about being in a flammable atmosphere. So if you were operating inside of a building and you are, see that your four gas meter on the LAL sensor is increasing in concentration, once you hit 10% of the lower explosive limit, you should withdraw the area because it is entirely likely that somewhere between where you are and where the source of that, that gas are, is, you could be in a flammable range. And when, gas, flammable, when combustible gases ignite in air inside of a structure, they can do so explosively. The other thing I'm concerned about isn't on the O2 sensor, isn't a low oxygen concentration because again, I have my own air with me with an air pack on. Um, I am however concerned about, about an elevated oxygen concentration. If I have a high oxygen concentration greater than 23.5 and I'm an alarm on the LALs, or correction, the O2 sensor, then that is definitely a particularly of concern because oxidizers greatly enhance combustion. And if I have an, an elevated oxygen content in a room, static electricity can make ordinary combustibles burn explosively. The next device I want you to bring with you when you're doing a hazmat investigation is the thermal imaging camera. The thermal imager will detect heat and also detect cold which is important for us to differentiate. If I have a pressure relief valve that has lifted and I'm expelling a gas, science will tell you that what comes out of that pressure relief valve should be cold. If I am seeing a heat signature coming out of a pressure relief valve, that is telling me I have a, have a chemical reaction happening internal to the container and at, you do not know whether or not the pressure relief valve is gonna keep up with the building pressure that is happening inside of that cylinder and you need to withdraw prior to that container coming apart violently. Additionally, if I see a container, say in a chemistry lab or a, an industrial process, that is a closed container without a pressure relief valve, and that container is getting warmer, as you're making your approach, the container is at ambient temperature of the floor is 68 degrees, the container is at 112 degrees, you continue watching it and the container temperature is increasing in temperature, 120, 130 degrees, you have no idea at what temperature the corresponding pressure is going to be that's gonna make that container fail violently. So at any point in time, you have a closed container that is increasing in temperature, you shall immediately withdraw so that you are not involved in a violent failure and ultimately be subjected to the fragmentation of that container tearing into your body. The last thing that we're gonna talk about is the gamma pager or PRD, personal radiological dosimeter. With this device, it is detecting gamma radiation, which is the one thing that while I'm wearing a turnout, uh, my turnout gear and an air pack that I'm not being protected from I'm being protected from alpha, I'm being protected by beta, I'm not being protected by gamma. This is gonna detect gamma. When it goes into alarm, it's at very low doses. So an alarm on this does not necessarily mean withdrawal. It means that there's something going on around you and it's calling your attention to it. So follow your own SOPs. The US EPA guidance is that for the purposes of rescue, a, a rescuer can be exposed to a full 25 rem in order to affect a rescue. Again, that's the part, SOPs will guide you in what your turn back value is going to be. So what we've been talking about here is rescue. The first new company arriving in turnout gear with an air pack. These things that we've discussed, the pH paper, the color metric papers, the four gas meter with high O2 and high flammability issues, containers that are increasing in temperature and radiation that is not, you're not being protected from. If any of those things go into alarm or give you any reason for cause, then that is telling you that your turnout gear and your air pack are not protecting you at that point. That's when you need to make sure that you change the atmosphere with aggressive ventilation, and maybe reattempt the rescue, or conversely withdraw until the proper personal protective equipment can arrive on scene. Thank you for your time and stay safe out there.